In the NBA, when players establish their presence as a highly capable contributor either at the level of stardom or as a productive role player, it often drives up interest in their services, and as a result, when these players become available, other teams do whatever they can to either sign them or trade for them. This is because, theoretically, the general managers believe that their skill sets that these guys have can bring to the team an ideal fit. However, nothing in the NBA is a given, and every so often, these moves result in complete failures, and the player production falls off a cliff. This brings us to the topic of today's video, where we will be discussing 9 players that were producing at a very high level, then when they went to another team, completely fell off individually and looked nothing like their prior selves. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first example of this happening that we'll discuss is actually one that happened most recently this season, being Mike Conley. Conley's been the longtime leader of the Memphis Grizzlies, at the helm of all of the grit and grind teams from the 2010s that always gave teams fits in the playoffs. And even though Conley never made an all-star game, at his peak, he was always looked at as all-star caliber, just on the fringe. He never tried to do too much, always looked to make the right play for either himself or others, had a calm and under control presence, and knocked down several big time shots over the years. He even had a career high in points just last season at about 21 per game, so when the Utah Jazz acquired him this summer, they were ecstatic because they assumed they were getting a big time playmaker to take some pressure off of Donovan Mitchell on offense. However, this season has been nothing short of a disaster for him, as his scoring is lower than it's been in 8 years and his efficiency was really terrible for most of the season. He was starting to pick things up a bit lately, but with the stoppage of the season, that momentum halted. And as a whole, his season was well below what was expected of him. Next up for discussion is actually another example coming from this current season being Al Horford. Horford's been the anchor of some very good playoff teams over the years for both the Atlanta Hawks and Boston Celtics. Horford's per game statistics may never have been the most impressive ones you'll see, but his impact always went beyond the box score. He does all the little things teams love from their big men, including play very strong defense protecting the paint, he's a very good passer as a big man, he's efficient, and he makes those around him better. When the 76ers acquired him this summer, the fit was admittedly questionable alongside Joel Embiid, but even in spite of that, this season has been terrible for him in several different aspects. For one, he hasn't even been efficient in his limited role, missing shots around the rim that used to be automatic for him in years past, and his shot from the perimeter is very unreliable. To add to it, his defense isn't even anywhere close to as impactful as it used to be, and overall, he just looks like a shell of himself. The next instance of this happening that we'll discuss happened a few years ago to Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas a few years ago was a guy that any basketball fan could get behind because after getting written off time and time again because of his height, he just continued to prove people wrong and get better and better. This peaked in 2017 with the Celtics when he exploded for a season average 29 points per game, putting on a show in the playoffs as well. Unfortunately, he also got injured in those playoffs and the following season he got traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers to team up with LeBron James, but when he returned from injury, it was clear he wasn't anywhere close to his former self. I wouldn't have included him on this list solely because of an injury, but it's now been three years since that all happened, and he's still struggling to find a consistent role anywhere. His all-star days are likely well behind him, which is a shame, because watching him on the Celtics was amazing. The next example of this up for discussion in this video is Dwight Howard. Back in his Orlando Magic days, Howard was easily the best center in the league and was playing at a surefire Hall of Fame level. He led them to the finals in 2009, he racked up several Defensive Player of the Year awards, and his combination of athleticism and strength was just too much to handle. However, the ending of his tenure there happened on rocky terms, so they traded him to the Los Angeles Lakers, where he would be on the big stage for the biggest franchise. However, from the jump, things started off on a bad note, and they didn't exactly get much better. He was still an all-star, but his individual production wasn't as great as it was in Orlando, the relationship between him and Kobe Bryant was always kind of rocky, and he was no longer the dominant defender he established himself in the league as. The team underperformed 
underperformed massively after being expected to be in the title hunt, and he only lasted one season before leaving. He never did manage to get back to his Orlando form at any point after that, so that change of scenery did kind of result in him falling off. The next one up for discussion is one of the more underrated ones on this list that many of you have probably forgotten about, but it's Ty Lawson. In the early 2010s, Lawson was a terrific point guard for the Denver Nuggets, who used his lightning quick speed, top tier passing ability, and craftiness to fill the box score and produce like one of the top players at the point guard position. In his last season in Denver, he averaged about 15 points and 9.5 and assists per game, ranking amongst the league leaders in assists. And as a creator was highly regarded. The Houston Rockets at the time were just coming off of a failed experiment with Jeremy Lin, so they were once again looking for a creator to play alongside James Harden, so they traded for Lawson, but once Lawson suited up for the Rockets, his production fell off a cliff. He averaged fewer than 6 points and 4 assists per game, which was easily the lowest of his career, and he also had several off-the-court issues that likely caused distractions. He would only play one more season in the league after that because something either mentally or physically was holding him back from being the guy that he was in Denver. Up next is a player who recently is more known for being a meme than a player, but at one point he was genuinely impactful for a winning team, being Lance Stevenson. During the era where the LeBron-led Miami Heat were dominating the Eastern Conference, the Pacers were one of their toughest opponents in their way to the finals, and while Paul George gets most of the credit for this, Stevenson emerged as someone that was tough to handle in 2014. He averaged about 14 points, 5 assists, and 7 rebounds per game that year, providing very balanced production across the board. He was an exceptional secondary playmaker who could electrify crowds with his fun style, and he became a fan favorite favorite because of the antics he would pull while also helping the team win. He entered free agency that summer as a hot commodity, but when he signed with the Charlotte Hornets, he immediately struggled. His efficiency tanked, his scoring was cut in half, and he was causing more problems on the court than were worth it. After that season, he played for another six teams and was never able to live up to the hype that he got in 2014, but we'll never forget the laughs that he gave us along the way. The next example of this up for discussion in this video is Andrew Bynum. When I mentioned earlier that Dwight Howard went to the Lakers and inevitably fell off a bit, the funny thing about that is that he was actually traded for Andrew Bynum, who went to the Philadelphia 76ers and saw a similar fate. On the Lakers, Bynum established himself as a top two center, regarded up there with Dwight Howard, so when the Sixers acquired him, the hope was that they would be able to compete with the Miami Heat in the East. He was recovering from a knee injury, but wasn't expected to miss much time. That is, until the setback started happening, which led to him going bowling while still injured, which then resulted in him missing the entire season because of a setback that he suffered while bowling. The Sixers were fed up and shipped him out after just one season in which he never played a game, and then just one single season later, he was completely out of the league. The interest that he showed in the game just seemed to be lacking since he left LA. He didn't have the drive to push himself back into top shape, and before he knew it, his career was over. And finally, the last player we'll discuss in this video is Darren Williams. Back in the late 2000s, Chris Paul began to prove himself to be the best point guard in the game, which was the case thought by many. However, what many people forget about this time is that Darren Williams was actually very much in the conversation for this title. He was averaging 20 and 10 at a time before it became a regular occurrence for players to do so, and he led the Jazz to be a pretty strong playoff threat every year. So when the Nets traded for him, excitement about potentially returning to being playoff threats was on every fan's mind. However, in his first full season with the team, he individually played pretty well but couldn't lead them to any more than 22 wins, and then every season after that, his production got worse and worse, and the team continued to underperform, and he never made another All-Star game after the first season with the team. His falloff was one of the more drastic ones we've recently seen, and there really isn't any one thing to pinpoint as the reason for it. He was out of the league at age 32, despite being considered elite just five seasons prior. 
And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below any other players you think would fit into this category. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.